Earlier this week, I ventured down to Nintendo's Bay Area headquarters to spend an hour of playtime with The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. And that last part is key, because this is still very much the same Wind Waker you know and maybe love, only with a fresh coat of paint and some small but smart improvements. Now while I have tried the game before at E3, I was actually able to play through a section far later in the game this time, starting from Hyrule Castle. But unfortunately, I don't actually have footage or screenshots of everything I saw, so please keep in mind that the visuals may not always match up perfectly. Okay, so let me get this out of the way. I'm not the biggest Wind Waker fan. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. Calm down, guys. So I won't get into all my reasons, but sailing was pretty definitely high up on my list. I mean, it was slow, it broke up the pace of the game, and having to change the wind direction with the Wind Waker constantly annoyed me to no end. Basically, sailing to me just felt like a really long loading screen, which is why I was very happy during my playtime with the Wind Waker HD, because it improves on this in almost every imaginable way, and more. The biggest change is that you'll now have access to a swift sail, which true to its name, allows you to sail around the ocean at a far brisker pace. And not only does it increase your overall top speed, but the wind's direction will actually change automatically to match whichever direction you're heading in, which reduces the amount of times you'll have to use a wind waker by at least a thousand. Okay, so maybe it only felt like a thousand, but still, it's a lot. Now for you purists out there, don't worry, you can still access a slower, wind-dependent sail from before, too. But really, why would you? So after a few minutes of sailing, I'm feeling pretty good. But then I notice that the gamepad can now display your seat chart instead of having to access it from the pause screen like in the original game. Which is a really nice addition as you can now chart your course as you're setting sail. Taken all together, these small changes greatly improve and streamline the sailing process. Now I can't say for sure whether I'll actually end up enjoying sailing this time around, but it'll certainly annoy me far less. And that's not the only benefit the gamepad provides. In addition to displaying a map of your current area, it's also used for inventory management, allowing you to easily equip items in real time simply by dragging and dropping them onto any of the three button slots. It's actually pretty similar to Ocarina of Time 3D. And not only that, but the gamepad even improves using some of those items too, allowing you to use the gyroscope to quickly and accurately aim any of the first person perspective items, such as the hook shot. Oh, and you can even walk around and aim while in the first person perspective now too. Then there's Link's camera, the pictograph box, which has seen some major improvements. Such as how it can now save 12 pictures instead of just 3, and they're also in glorious full color too, instead of the black and white originals. Oh, and you can even take selfies now too, and you can change Link's expression while doing so. But what good is a selfie if you can't share it with the world? And luckily you can do just that thanks to Miiverse support. Another new feature enabled by Miiverse are Tingle Bottles, which you'll gain access to once you rescue Tingle, which by the way is no longer optional. These allow you to drop bottled messages into the ocean where they'll then wash up on the shore of someone else playing the game. We weren't able to see this in action, but we imagine it could be useful for providing gameplay tips to whomever may encounter the bottle. Unfortunately, this feature does come at the expense of the Tingle Tuner option from the original game, which is unfortunate as it would have been a perfect fit for the gamepad. Now perhaps one of the biggest gripes people had about the Wind Waker was the infamous Triforce Hunt. You know, the one where they sail around looking for seed charts, they then had to have deciphered for 300 rupees a pop in order to then seek out the 8 different pieces of the Triforce? Well, that too has been greatly improved. Now I wasn't able to try it for myself, but according to the Nintendo rep on site, you'll still have to hunt down all 8, but this time only 3 of them require seed charts, which so should greatly simplify and shorten the amount of time it takes. So as you can probably tell, Wind Waker has received nips and tucks in all kinds of ways. And on top of everything we've mentioned so far, some animations have still been shortened, it's now faster to pull up sunken treasure, and even using the Wind Waker has been tweaked, now allowing you to start conducting at any time. And of course, the entire thing looks gorgeous, especially with its improved lighting models all running at 1080p HD. Now as far as I could tell, the raw assets themselves, like the character models, are all identical to before, but the otherwise fantastic visuals really make them a non-issue. Oh, and there are several ways to play the game too, as the game supports a pro controller in addition to the gamepad, as well as off-screen play. And for you more experienced Wind Waker fans, there is a new hero mode available from the start that not only doubles the amount of damage you'll take, but also removes all health-restoring hearts from the adventure. That's really nasty! But luckily, this game has plenty of heart to be found in all the right places, and some very smart tweaks that improve what many consider to be Link's finest adventure. And you won't have to wait much longer before you can try it for yourself, as it launches in the United States this October at $59.99. Thanks for watching, make sure to stay tuned to GamingSplain.com for more on The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD and other things gaming too.